This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. July 13th through 19th, Alma chapters 32 through 35. Plant this word in your hearts. Record the spiritual impressions you receive as you study Alma chapters 32 through 35. What do you feel inspired to do because of what you learn? For the Zoramites, prayer was a self-centered, routine practice that happened only once a week. It consisted of standing where all could see and repeating vain, self-satisfied words. Perhaps worse, the Zoramites lacked faith in Jesus Christ, even denied His existence, and persecuted the poor. See Alma chapter 31 verses 9 through 25. But they had fallen into great errors, for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God and His statutes according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily, that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, in fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them. Now when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and that they did gather themselves together on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord. And they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing, which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person. Therefore, whosoever desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and that thou wast a spirit, and that thou art a spirit, and that thou wilt be a spirit for ever. Holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers, but we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever, and thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast by thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank thee, and we also thank thee that thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ which doth lead their hearts to wander far from thee, our God. And again we thank thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Ramiumptum, which, being interpreted, is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up every man the selfsame prayer unto God, thanking their God that they were chosen of him, and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come, which they knew nothing about. Now after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand, to offer up thanks after their manner. Now when Alma saw this, his heart was grieved, for he saw that they were a wicked and a perverse people. Yea, he saw that their hearts were set upon gold and upon silver and upon all manner of fine goods. 
Yea, and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting in their pride. By contrast, Alma and Amulek boldly taught that prayer has more to do with what happens in our hearts than on a public platform. And if it doesn't lead to compassion toward those in need, it is vain and availeth nothing. See Alma chapter 34 verse 28. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all. For after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need, I say unto you, if ye do not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Most important, it is an expression of faith in Jesus Christ, who offers redemption through his infinite and eternal sacrifice. See Alma chapter 34, verse 10. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, yea, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. Such faith, Alma explained, is born of humility and a desire to believe. See Alma chapter 32, verse 27. But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until ye believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words. It grows gradually like a tree and requires constant nourishment. As you read Alma chapters 32 through 35, you might consider your own faith and prayers. Do you ever feel any Zoramite-like attitudes creeping in? How will you nourish your faith in Jesus Christ so it will become a tree springing up unto everlasting life? See Alma chapter 32, verse 41. But if ye will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Alma chapter 32, verses 1 through 16 I can choose to be humble. Alma perceived that the poor Zoramites were humble and in a preparation to hear the word. See Alma chapter 32, verse 6. And now when Alma heard this, he turned him about, his face immediately towards him, and he beheld with great joy, for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them, and that they were in a preparation to hear the word. As you read Alma chapter 32 verses 1 through 16, think about how you prepare to hear the word of God. And it came to pass that they did go forth, and began to preach the word of God unto the people, entering into their synagogues and into their houses, yea, and even they did preach the word in their streets. And it came to pass that after much labor among them, they began to have success among the poor class of people, for behold, they were cast out of the synagogues because of the coarseness of their apparel. Therefore they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship God being esteemed as filthiness, therefore they were poor. Yea, they were esteemed by their brethren as dross, therefore they were poor as to the things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. Now, as Alma was teaching and speaking unto the people upon the hill Oneida, there came a great multitude unto him, who were those of whom we have been speaking, of whom were poor in heart, because of their poverty as to the things of the world. And they came unto Alma, and the one who was the foremost among them said unto him, Behold, what shall these my brethren do? For they are despised of all men because of their poverty, 
yea, and more especially by our priests, for they have cast us out of our synagogues, which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands, and they have cast us out because of our exceeding poverty, and we have no place to worship our God, and behold, what shall we do? And now when Alma heard this, he turned him about, his face immediately towards him, and he beheld with great joy, for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them, and that they were in a preparation to hear the word. Therefore he did say no more to the other multitude, but he stretched forth his hand, and cried unto those whom he beheld, who were truly penitent, and said unto them, I behold that ye are lowly in heart, and if so, blessed are ye. Behold, thy brother hath said, What shall we do? For we are cast out of our synagogues, that we cannot worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, Do ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, save it be in your synagogues only? And moreover, I would ask, Do ye suppose that ye must not worship God only once in a week? I say unto you, It is well that ye are cast out of your synagogues, that ye may be humble, and that ye may learn wisdom. For it is necessary that ye should learn wisdom. For it is because that ye are cast out, that ye are despised of your brethren because of your exceeding poverty, that ye are brought to a lowliness of heart, for ye are necessarily brought to be humble. And now, because ye are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeketh repentance. And now surely, whosoever repenteth shall find mercy. And he that findeth mercy, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And now, as I said unto you, that because ye were compelled to be humble, ye were blessed. Do ye not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word? Yea, he that truly humbleth himself, and repenteth of his sins, and endureth to the end, the same shall be blessed. Yea, much more blessed than they who are compelled to be humble because of their exceeding poverty. Therefore, blessed are they who humble themselves without being compelled to be humble. Or rather, in other words, blessed is he that believeth in the word of God, and is baptized without stubbornness of heart. Yea, without being brought to know the word, or even compelled to know, before they will believe. What experiences have humbled you? What have you done to become more humble? These verses could teach you how to choose humility rather than be compelled to be humble. For example, what is the difference between being poor as to things of the world and being poor in heart? See verse 3. Therefore they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship God, being esteemed as filthiness. Therefore they were poor. Yea, they were esteemed by their brethren as dross. Therefore they were poor as to the things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. What does it mean to humble yourself because of the word? See verse 14. And now, as I said unto you, that because ye were compelled to be humble, ye were blessed. Do ye not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word? See also Humility, Gospel Topics, topics.churchofjesuschrist.org. Alma chapter 32 verses 17 through 43 and chapters 33 through 34. I exercise faith in Jesus Christ by planting and nourishing His Word in my heart. Why do you think Alma spoke about planting a seed in response to the Zormites' questions about worship? What is the seed that Alma spoke of? See Alma chapter 32 verse 28 and chapter 33 verses 22 through 23. Now we will compare the word unto a seed. Now if ye give place, that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed, or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief, that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts, and when you feel these swelling motions, 
ye will begin to say within yourselves, It must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul, yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding, yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. If so, woe shall come upon you, but if not so, then cast about your eyes and begin to believe in the Son of God, that he will come to redeem his people, and that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection, that all men shall stand before him, to be judged at the last and judgment day, according to their works. And now, my brethren, I desire that ye shall plant this word in your hearts, and as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith. And behold, it will become a tree, springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light, through the joy of his Son. And even all this can ye do, if ye will. Amen. As you read Alma chapter 32, verses 17 through 43, Note words and phrases that help you understand how to exercise faith in Jesus Christ and His Word. What do you learn about what faith is and what it is not? Yea, there are many who do say, If thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall know of a surety, then we shall believe. Now I ask, Is this faith? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. For if a man knoweth a thing, he hath no cause to believe, for he knoweth it. And now, how much more cursed is he that knoweth the will of God, and doeth it not, than he that only believeth, or only hath cause to believe, and falleth into transgression? Now of this thing ye must judge. Behold, I say unto you, that it is on the one hand, even as it is on the other, and it shall be unto every man according to his work. And now, as I said concerning faith, faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. And now, behold, I say unto you, and I would that ye should remember, that God is merciful unto all who believe on his name. Therefore he desireth, in the first place, that ye should believe, yea, even on his word. And now he imparteth his word by angels unto men, yea, not only men, but women also. Now this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. And now, my beloved brethren, as ye have desired to know of me what ye shall do because ye are afflicted and cast out, now I do not desire that ye should suppose that I mean to judge you only according to that which is true. For I do not mean that ye all of you have been compelled to humble yourselves, for I verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves, let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might. Now as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words, ye cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until ye believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words. Now we will compare the word unto a seed. Now if ye give place, that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed, or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief, that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts, and when you feel these swelling motions, ye will begin to say within yourselves, It must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good for it beginneth to enlarge my soul, yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding, yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. Now behold, would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, yea, nevertheless it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge. But behold, 
As the seed swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, then you must needs say that the seed is good. For behold, it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, will not this strengthen your faith? Yea, it will strengthen your faith. For ye will say, I know that this is a good seed. For behold, it sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, are ye sure that this is a good seed? I say unto you, Yea, for every seed bringeth forth unto its own likeness. Therefore, if a seed groweth, it is good. But if it groweth not, behold, it is not good. Therefore, it is cast away. And now, behold, because ye have tried the experiment, and planted the seed, and it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, ye must needs know that the seed is good. And now, behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing, and your faith is dormant, and this because you know. For ye know that the word hath swelled your souls, and ye also know that it hath sprouted up, that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened, and your mind doth begin to expand. O then, is not this real? I say unto you, Yea, because it is light, and whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore ye must know that it is good. And now, behold, after ye have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, neither must ye lay aside your faith, for ye have only exercised your faith to plant the seed that ye might try the experiment to know if the seed was good. And behold, as the tree beginneth to grow, ye will say, Let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us. And now behold, if ye nourish it with much care, it will get root, and grow up and bring forth fruit. But if ye neglect the tree, and take no thought for its nourishment, Behold, it will not get any root, and when the heat of the sun cometh and scorcheth it, because it hath no root, it withers away, and ye pluck it up and cast it out. Now this is not because the seed was not good, neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable, but it is because your ground is barren, and ye will not nourish the tree, therefore ye cannot have the fruit thereof, and thus if ye will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, ye can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life. But if ye will nourish the word, ye nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence, and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root, and behold it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it, that it may take root in you, behold, by and by ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and which is white above all that is white, yea, and pure above all that is pure. And ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled, that ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then, my brethren, ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, and patience, and long suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Then, as you read chapters 33 through 34, search for answers to the Zoramites' question How do we plant the seed? See Alma chapter 33, verse 1. Now, after Alma had spoken these words, they sent forth unto him, desiring to know whether they should believe in one God, that they might obtain this fruit of which he had spoken, or how they should plant the seed, or the word of which he had spoken, which he said must be planted in their hearts, or in what manner they should begin to exercise their faith. Here's another way to study Alma chapters 32 through 34. Draw pictures representing different phases of a seed's growth. Then label each picture with words from Alma chapter 32 verses 28 through 43 that help you understand how to plant and nourish the word in your heart. 
See also Matthew chapter 13 verses 3 through 8 and verses 18 through 23. Hebrews chapter 11. Neil L. Anderson, Faith is Not by Chance, but by Choice. Ensign or Leahona. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Chapter 11 by faith we understand the word and work of God. The faith of the ancients was centered in Christ. By faith men subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, and worked miracles. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. 
By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, That in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Neil L. Anderson, Faith is Not by Chance but by Choice, Ensign or Liahona, November 2015. Faith in Jesus Christ, Gospel Topics, topics.churchofjesuschrist.org. Based on actual events as recorded in the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. There are many who do say, if thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall believe. Now I ask, is this faith? Nay. Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. Now, God imparteth his word by angels unto men. Yea, not only men, but women also. Now, this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. 
You cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. If ye will experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you until you can give place for a portion of my words. We will compare the word unto a seed. If ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you begin to say within yourselves, it must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. And now behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing. And as the tree beginneth to grow, you will say, let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us. But if ye neglect the tree and take no thought for its nourishment, Behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh, it withers away and you cast it out. Now, this is not because the seed was not good, but it is because your ground is barren and you will not nourish the tree. If you will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, he can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life. But if you will nourish the word by your faith, with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word and nourishing it, that it may take root in you. Behold, by and by, ye shall pluck the fruit thereof. And ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled. But ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then you shall reap the rewards of your faith, your diligence, patience, and long suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Shall we believe in one God that we might obtain this fruit? Also, in what manner should we plant the seed or exercise our faith? Do you remember what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship? He said, Thou art merciful, O God, for thou hast heard my prayer when I was in the wilderness and in my field and when I did turn unto my closet. Yea, and thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out and have been despised by mine enemies. And it is because of thy son that thou hast been merciful unto me. Therefore, I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy for thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy son. Do you believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Believe in the Son of God, that he will come to redeem his people, that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins 
and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection, that all men shall stand before him to be judged at that last and judgment day according to their works. I desire that you shall plant this word in your hearts. And as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith. And behold, it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then, may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light to the joy of his Son. Amen. Alma chapter 33, verses 2 through 11. Chapter 34, verses 17 through 29. I can worship God in prayer, anytime and anywhere. Alma and Amulek's counsel about worship and prayer was meant to correct specific misunderstandings the Zoramites had. See Alma chapter 31, verses 13 through 23. But they had fallen into great errors, for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God and His statutes according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily, that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, in fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them. Now when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and that they did gather themselves together on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord. And they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing, which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person. Therefore, whosoever desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and that thou wast a spirit, and that thou art a spirit, and that thou wilt be a spirit for ever. Holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers, but we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever, and thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast by thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank Thee, and we also thank Thee that Thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from Thee, our God. And again we thank Thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Ramiumptum, which, being interpreted, is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up every man the selfsame prayer unto God, thanking their God that they were chosen of him and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come, which they knew nothing about. Now, after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again, until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand, to offer up thanks after their manner. Now, when Alma saw this, his heart was grieved, for he saw that they were a wicked and a perverse people. Yea, he saw that their hearts were set upon gold, and upon silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. Yea, and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting in their pride. 
but the truths they taught can help any of us understand prayer and worship better. Maybe you could make a list of truths about prayer that you find in Alma chapter 33 verses 2 through 11 and chapter 34 verses 17 through 29. Next to that list, make a list of possible misconceptions about prayer that these truths correct. See Alma chapter 31 verses 12 through 23. And Alma said unto them, Behold, ye have said that ye could not worship your God, because ye are cast out of your synagogues. But behold, I say unto you, If ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, ye do greatly err, and ye ought to search the Scriptures. If ye suppose that they have taught you this, ye do not understand them. Do ye remember to have read what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship? For he said, Thou art merciful, O God, for thou hast heard my prayer, even when I was in the wilderness. Yea, thou wast merciful when I prayed concerning those who were mine enemies, and thou didst turn them to me. Yea, O God, and thou wast merciful unto me when I did cry unto thee in my field, when I did cry unto thee in my prayer, and thou didst hear me. And again, O God, when I did turn to my house, thou didst hear me in my prayer. And when I did turn unto my closet, O Lord, and prayed unto thee, thou didst hear me. Yea, thou art merciful unto thy children when they cry unto thee, to be heard of thee and not of men, and thou wilt hear them. Yea, O God, thou hast been merciful unto me, and heard my cries in the midst of thy congregations. Yea, and thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out, and have been despised by mine enemies. Yea, thou didst hear my cries, and wast angry with mine enemies, and thou didst visit them in thine anger with speedy destruction. And thou didst hear me because of mine afflictions and my sincerity. And it is because of thy Son that thou hast been thus merciful unto me. Therefore I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy, for thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy Son. And chapter 34, verses 17 through 29. Therefore may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. Yea, humble yourselves, and continue in prayer unto him. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields. Yea, over all your flocks. Cry unto him in your houses. Yea, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Yea, cry unto him against the power of your enemies. Yea, cry unto him against the devil, who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that ye may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets, and your secret places, and in your wilderness. Yea, and when you do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare, and also for the welfare of those who are around you. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all, for after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need. I say unto you, if ye do not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Therefore, if ye do not remember to be charitable, ye are as dross, which the refiners do cast out, it being of no worth, and is trodden under foot of men. How will the things you learn from these verses affect the way you pray and worship? Alma chapter 33, verses 3 through 17. Who were Zenos and Zenoch? Zenos and Zenoch were prophets who testified of Jesus Christ during Old Testament times, but their teachings are not found in the Old Testament. The Nephites had access to the teachings of these prophets, probably because they were included in the brass plates that Nephi obtained from Laban. They are also mentioned in 1 Nephi chapter 19, verses 10-12, through 12, 
Jacob chapter 5 verse 1, and Helaman chapter 8 verses 19 through 20. And the God of our fathers, who were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and also were preserved in the wilderness by him, yea, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, yieldeth himself, according to the words of the angel, as a man, into the hands of wicked men, to be lifted up, according to the words of Zenoch, and to be crucified, according to the words of Neam, and to be buried in a sepulcher, according to the words of Zenos, which he spake concerning the three days of darkness, which should be a sign given of his death unto those who should inhabit the isles of the sea, more especially given unto those who are of the house of Israel. For thus spake the prophet, The Lord God surely shall visit all the house of Israel at that day, some with his voice, because of their righteousness, unto their great joy and salvation, and others with the thunderings and the lightnings of his power, by tempest, by fire, and by smoke, and vapor of darkness, and by the opening of the earth, and by mountains, which shall be carried up. And all these things must surely come, saith the prophet Zenos, and the rocks of the earth must rend. And because of the groanings of the earth, many of the kings of the isles of the sea shall be wrought upon by the Spirit of God to exclaim, The God of nature suffers. Behold, my brethren, do ye not remember to have read the words of the prophet Zenos, which he spake unto the house of Israel, saying, And now I would that ye should know, that even since the days of Abraham there have been many prophets that have testified these things. Yea, behold, the prophet Zenos did testify boldly, for the which he was slain. And behold, also Zenoch, and also Isaiah, and also Isaiah and Jeremiah, Jeremiah being that same prophet who testified of the destruction of Jerusalem. And now we know that Jerusalem was destroyed according to the words of Jeremiah. O oh, then why not the Son of God come, according to his prophecy? Alma chapter 34, verses 30 through 41. This life is the time to prepare to meet God. As you read Alma chapter 34, verses 30 through 41, consider how you might improve your time well in this life. See verse 33. How can repentance and patience help you prepare to meet God? Are there changes you need to make that you have been procrastinating? Be sure to act on any spiritual impressions you receive. And now, my brethren, I would that after ye have received so many witnesses, seeing that the Holy Scriptures testify of these things, ye come forth and bring fruit unto repentance. Yea, I would that ye would come forth and harden not your hearts any longer. For behold, now is the time and the day of your salvation. And therefore, if ye will repent and harden not your hearts, immediately shall the great plan of redemption be brought about unto you. For behold, this life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yea, behold, the day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors. And now, as I said unto you before, as ye have had so many witnesses, Therefore, I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness, wherein there can be no labor performed. Ye cannot say, when ye are brought to that awful crisis, that I will repent, that I will return to my God. Nay, ye cannot say this, for that same Spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same Spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. For behold, if ye have procrastinated the day of your repentance even until death, behold, ye have become subjected to the Spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his. Therefore the Spirit of the Lord hath withdrawn from you and hath no place in you, and the devil hath all power over you, and this is the final state of the wicked. And this I know, because the Lord hath said he dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. 
Yea, and he has also said that the righteous shall sit down in his kingdom, to go no more out, but their garments should be made white through the blood of the Lamb. And now, my beloved brethren, I desire that ye should remember these things, and that ye should work out your salvation with fear before God, and that ye should no more deny the coming of Christ, that ye contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but that ye receive it, and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust, and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. Yea, and I also exhort you, my brethren, that ye may be watchful unto prayer continually, that ye may not be led away by the temptations of the devil, that he may not overpower you, that ye may not become his subjects at the last day. For behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. And now, my beloved brethren, I would exhort you to have patience, and that ye bear with all manner of afflictions, that ye do not revile against those who do cast you out because of your exceeding poverty, lest ye become sinners like unto them. But that ye have patience, and bear with those afflictions, with a firm hope that ye shall one day rest from all your afflictions. See also Alma chapter 12 verse 24. And we see that death comes upon mankind, yea, the death which has been spoken of by Amulek, which is the temporal death. Nevertheless, there was a space granted unto man in which he might repent. Therefore this life became a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God, a time to prepare for that endless state which has been spoken of by us, which is after the resurrection of the dead. Larry R. Lawrence, What Lack I Yet, and Signer Leahona, November 2015. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Family Home Evening. As you read the scriptures with your family, the Spirit can help you know what principles to emphasize and discuss in order to meet the needs of your family. Here are some ideas. Alma chapter 32, verses 9 through 11. Chapter 33, verses 2 through 11. Chapter 34, verses 38 through 39. What would it be like if we were allowed to worship and pray only on Sunday? As you read these verses together, family members could discuss how they can worship every day and why they are thankful that they can. Alma chapter 32, verses 28 through 43. A picture of a tree accompanies this outline. You might use it to illustrate Alma's words in these verses. Or your family could go for a walk to find plants at different stages of growth and read verses from Alma chapter 32 that compare a growing plant to our faith. Maybe each family member could plant a seed and discuss what we need to do to help it grow. Over the coming weeks, you could check on your seeds and remind each other of the need to continually nourish our testimonies. Alma chapter 33 verses 2 through 11, chapter 34 verses 17 through 29. What do these verses suggest about how we can improve our individual and family prayers? Alma chapter 34, verse 31. What experiences have shown us that when we repent, we begin immediately to experience the blessings of the plan of redemption? Alma chapter 34, verses 33 through 35. Does your family know what it means to procrastinate? Maybe someone can share examples of procrastination and its negative consequences. What does it mean to procrastinate the day of our repentance? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Improving our teaching. Draw pictures. You might let family members draw as they learn from the scriptures. For instance, they might enjoy drawing a seed growing into a tree as they study Alma 32. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity 
along with granting permission, they asked that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thank you.